Hello. Hi. Welcome to Mbari. I'm Kim. Thank you. I'm Yetta. All right. So we're in the harbor now. Yeah, these are our docks. Uh, most of our boats are out at sea right now. This is our newest boat, the Rachel Carson. The Mbari is a place where scientists and engineers work together to study the ocean and to develop new tools, new technologies for studying the ocean. Watch your footstep here. So I just want to give you a really quick 30-second tour of an ROV. You have an orange float pack that keeps the ROV from just being a weight at the end of the tether. It can swim around. It's neutrally buoyant. You have lights. You have at least six lights because it's completely dark in the deep sea. So you've got to carry your own lights. And even so, you can only see about 20 feet out. And you've got cameras so that you have the eyeballs of, of the scientists. And then you have manipulator arms. These are, the, these are the hands of the scientists when they're on the ocean. So you can collect things. You can do experiments. You can build things underwater with those arms. From the very beginning, David Packard stressed that the technologies were improving so much that it didn't make as much sense to send humans down into the ocean. It's much safer and much cheaper and actually much more efficient to send robots. These days, the robots can do just about everything that we, the human-occupied vehicles can do. This is our AUV lab. These are autonomous underwater vehicles, robots that essentially think for themselves and, and once we put them in, their, in the water, they're entirely on their own. I, th I think when, when we look at the ocean after having studied it, we, we think of the ocean as a four-dimensional space. That sounds very science fiction-y. But we, you look at the surface and you're just looking at a two-dimensional surface and there's wonderful things going on. That's where the sunlight comes in. That's where your whales and your mammals and your seabirds are all gathering to feed. But below that, that wouldn't exist except for this third dimension, which is the depth of the oceans. And the depth, you know, the first hundred meters or two is where the sunlight is. That's where a lot of the life is, where that, the life, uh, the food webs are so critical. And then you go down, but it goes down thousands of meters. It goes down miles down below that. So you think of the ocean, you start with this smooth flat surface. You go down miles below that and you've got a bunch of life. And then you have to think about time and how the ocean is continuously changing. It's never the same. So we go out there and we look at it at one point in time and we're not even seeing a, a fragment of the picture. We have to figure out ways to go out there and be there continuously and look at the changes over space over three dimensions. And that's the big challenge we're facing in the 21st century. Is how do you study something three-dimensional that's changing continuously on all different scales from millimeters to miles? You can see we've got I, all I kinds can't of even, pieces. Yes, I can't even guess. Maybe float. It has like a huge ball. It looks like a planet. <laughs> um, I would just guess it's like a floating ball that collects information like on top of the ocean. but. I have zero idea. So that's a really good guess. And this is actually different pieces. So, so some of this floats and some of it goes down into the deep sea. Mm -hmm. So this is a robotic DNA lab. So wow. right now, when most people do DNA analysis, like DNA fingerprinting, you get a sample of DNA, mm -hmm. you know, a hair from your suspect, you take it in the lab, <laughs> and, and they have to take the DNA out of the hair and do all these analyses. And then, you know, weeks later, they'll tell you what maybe who it is or what the, the DNA sequence. This does all of that in the ocean automatically in real time and sends the results back to shore. So we've been studying Monterey Bay for about 25 years with, with these robots that can go down to the bottom of the canyon. And we are still seeing new animals every few months. And uh, we've estimated we've explored about 5% of the canyon in that 25 years. So the analogy I like to make is, it's like trying to explore the Grand Canyon, it's a similar size to the Monterey Canyon, with a flashlight. Well, thank you, Yata, for coming. Thank you, thank you Enjoyed so much it. for having us. Well, it's great, I always like to show people around the place. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> it's very, very fascinating. Well, have a great trip. Thank and we'll you. look forward to hearing how things go. Definitely, we'll keep you posted.